and 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 and, and colleagues to to also include some German data. So during these these past days, uh, these coming days, I think we will hear a lot about Pike in the Baltic Sea. But I just wanted to make three statement statement of, of Pike in the Baltic Sea. As all of you are aware, it's an iconic species of high recreation value uh, uh, in the Baltic Sea. Um, Sometimes people refer to, to pike as also being of commercial importance. So here I just made an outline of, of, of the revenues in different uh, fish species, uh, according to FIO during uh, 2015 and 19. As you can see, pike is not of that much imp economic importance in, in, in the Baltic Sea. It's actually even outnumbered by roach. roach. And uh, um, uh, concerning herring, which is the biggest fishery, uh, it's, it's a minor minor portion, but locally it can be com of commercial importance as well. Um, usually we also refer to pike as an ecologically important top predator. Uh, perhaps it used to be in the Baltic Sea. Uh, I think we will hear some, some presentations by, for example, uh, Yuan, a club later, uh, who will shed light on, and, uh, on how, how, how important uh, pike is really is uh, ecologically today in the Baltic Sea. And I think Agnes will also present something about this today. So nevertheless, uh, pike is a species that we should uh, care about in the Baltic Sea. Um, and when you talk to people, you often come across the opinion that uh, pike is in severe decline in the Baltic Sea. And I just picked up this quote by a, a local fish manager uh, in Stockholm uh, this summer who, stay, who, who claimed that uh, pike in the Bol in Stockholm archipelago should be red listed. It's, it's that rare these days. So, but are there pike uh, decline in pike in the Baltic Sea? I think that's the question. And what is the scientific basis for this st statement and, and what does data tell us? So Robert nicely introduced this uh, 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 map, which I did uh, some years ago, reviewing the knowledge state uh, on, on, uh, on Pike population trends, and you see there, there are very very little published, uh, but there are signs of decline in more southern areas recently. Uh, but um, given that we annually monitor coastal fish uh, to quite a large extent in the Baltic Sea, uh, this is a map of of, of the current uh, or past monitoring areas for coastal fish in the Baltic Sea. Uh, uh, it's a little bit surprising that we can't we haven't done more than this. I should also say that in Poland and Germany, uh, the, the monitoring areas, um, in some, some cases, have, the monitoring has stopped or is project based. So, so it's, it's, it's not a good network of, of fisheries independent monitoring in, in especially uh, Germany and, and, and Poland. Uh, and in Denmark, pike is not occurring that frequently in coastal waters. Perhaps Christian will prove the opposite in his, 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 his presentation soon, but, but uh, it's, it's not common in, 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 in the da Danish data at least. So, but given this network of monitoring, uh, pike are rare in the catches. And there's also spatial gradients, not the south and natural occurrence of pike. And there's differences in methodology, methodology across areas of countries, which make this challenging. So the aims of, of, of this study was to identify in which areas there are data to support an assessment of population trends in pike and address spatial tem temporal patterns in pike population trends. So the methods and data, <clears throat> we screened, uh, um, or actually, I asked a lot of my colleagues, can you send me some data on, on pike, uh, either from fisheries independent monitoring, which in my point of view is the best and most reliable data source. However, as I said, pike is, is, is rarely caught in, in our standardized monitoring gear, which is gillnets. Uh, and also, we perform a lot of the monitoring during summer, where pike is not that abundant uh, uh, cl close to shore. Uh, in cases where there were not fisheries independent data, we also include, include recreational catch data and also commercial catch data. Uh, and and, and uh, foremost, we focused on, on, on in Ab abundance indexes uh, that used effort data as well, but in some countries, for example, in Poland, uh, uh, effort data is so not reliable, so we focused on the landings in, in the commercial coastal fishery. We have uh, looked at the trends uh, over time uh, during, using linear trends, log trends on data, and also common trends for the last 15 to 16 years. The reason for uh, only using data until from 2005 is that when we looked all, at all the monitoring data available. And um, here you can see the plot with the dark blue um, 
uh, squares is areas with risk data. Um, you can see that uh, the shortest time series starts in 2005. So to get a comprehensive uh, and a comparable data set, we, we selected data from 2005 and onwards. So <clears throat> here's how it looks, the data available, uh, availability. So uh, the blue squares are Gilnet uh, monitoring. Um, the uh, green uh, dots are commercial data and the uh, purple uh, um, triangles is recreational data. And as you'd say in Finland, we have put points here, but it's actually regions. So it's a central point of a region uh, for the uh, commercial and recreational data. So we caught in these areas, we have caught at least one pike since 2005. Uh, but when looking in reality, uh, if you, you know, to be able to do trend analysis, uh, especially the, the fisheries independent data is, is much less, it's, it's more than half. So, so this is how it looks. We have three fisheries independent data. We have three countries, 15 sites, recreational data only in Finland, seven regions, one country, and commercial catch data we have in five countries. So Finland, uh, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland and Germany. And the reason for including commercial and recreation catch data, as you can see, is that there's very little monitoring in these countries. So we had to uh, uh, include another data source in order to do something. So what does the results tell us? When we start focusing on the monitoring data, and this is uh, panels for Sweden, Estonia, Lithuania. And what you can see in, in Sweden, it's, it's mainly downward trends or no trends. Estonia, it's no trends or an upward trend actually in, in the area of Huma. In Lithuania, there is no trend. And when plotting this on a map, this is how it looks. So, so the red symbols indicate the negative trend at a significant value of 0.1, uh, green, a positive trend, and blue, a no trend. And the yellow symbol is the uh, areas that are excluded. And what you can see the, that is that there is a negative trend along the Swedish coast, in most other areas, southern Sweden coast, and in most other areas, there is either no trend, or in, the, in Hiuma in Estonia, there's actually a positive trend during uh, the last 15 years. When looking at the recreational data, here we are confined to, to, to Finnish data. Uh, so what you can see here is the plots for the seven different regions. You see uh, uh, no upward trend, where, but a clear downward trend in many areas. But we're looking at uh, having the criteria of significant at point 0.1. Uh, it turns out that only two of the most southern areas actually exhibit the downward trend. So in the islands of Åland and also in the inner part of the Gulf of Finland. But you should bear in mind uh, that, that this data includes uh, a lot of uh, uncertainties since it relies on self-reported catch data and also effort. When we come down to commercial catch data, uh, <clears throat> this is the panels for Finland, Latvia, Lithuania, and Germany. And what you can see in Lithuania, there's a clear negative trend. In Finland, it's positive trends in all areas. Uh, and in Germany, it's both ups and downs. In Lat Latvia, it's stable and, and to some extent positive trends. Uh, adding information uh, from Germany from 1955, you can see there's a clear downward trend. But, but when you focus on the times from mid 2000s until now, you can see a positive trend in many areas. In Poland, we didn't have any effort, reliable effort data. So here we only screen landings. And in most cases, there is a slight downward trend. So when adding this to the picture, uh, we can see that there are positive trends in Finland and Germany, uh, also one positive trend in Latvia, whereas in other areas, there is downward trends or no trends. But I must say that effort data is here highly un uh, unreliable. So you have to question how reliable this um, data is. So uh, we also had a look at what landings tells us. We took away the uh, unreliable effort data and there uh, a more negative picture appears, but still there's some positive signs, uh, positive landings uh, catches in Finland and, and Germany. Uh, so when you combine all these data sources into one si uh, single map, this is what, what, what comes out. Uh, so <clears throat> we have quite a lot of downward trends in the Southern parts of the Baltic Sea. Uh, we have some positive trends in, in, in German coastal waters, in Estonian coastal waters, and in Latvian coastal waters, and also in the, along the Finnish coast. So there seem to be some pattern, but, but not really clear. So what do these results then tell us? Uh, I think we show here that a pan-Baltic assessment of pike is challenging uh, and because there's a shortage, shortage of, of reliable data, even 
the Gilnet monitoring data is unreliable due to low catches. Um, but I think we can say that this, we have some evidence that pike is in decline in, in, in many areas, not all. And there are spatial differences in population trends. And the reason for this could be either that there's differences in data sources in, uh, in the data source and quality, uh, as I outlined on the previous slides, uh, but there might also be differences in area uh, across areas in impact, impacting pressures such as fish, fishing level, habitat exploitation, and natural predation, both by the smaller species in the Baltic, one of the smallest species in the Baltic Sea stickleback, and also one of the largest species, uh, which is seals. So, um, and, uh, I also think we can ask ourselves what's happening in, in German coastal waters, since we see positive trend both in, in, in catch per unit effort and landings. So by this, uh, I think this is not the final round of this analysis. I think we could advance and continue this a little bit more. Uh, but I would like to thank you for listening. And uh, this study was made uh, possible with some support from within Helcom Blues project and also the Swedish Agency for Marine and Water Management. And I hope that me and my son will uh, have the opportunity to go out in, in the Swedish archipelago to catch pike in the future, because nowadays it's really bad fishing. Uh, here is a picture this spring on our small shitty lake nearby our house where pike is still really abundant and fun to fish. So thanks, and I'm happy to answer questions if I have any.